Hey everyone, I am here with my mid-month wrap-up. I have read a fair bit this month so far and I feel like if I keep up my reading pace the way it has been for the last couple of months, I probably should start doing these videos so that I am not doing 10 minute wrap-ups at the end of the month. The first book that I read in 2017 was Lady Midnight and this was a buddy read with Sivvy from Cookie Addiction. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I don't like Shadowhunters. I think that I've said this a lot, like I'm not really that big a fan of the whole world of Shadowhunters, like the Mortal Instruments, the Infernal Devices. And when I heard about the Dark Artifices, I was like, oh, you know, because I love LA as a setting and Cassandra Clare's writing is really, really great in the scope of you're there. You know, you feel like you're there with the characters. She writes these characters that you don't particularly like identify with in any way but you kind of care about what happens with them I still feel like her books have that sort of thing of like they're just maybe you know a hundred pages too long or whatever there's a lot going on in them and to read Lady Midnight you need to have read well I hadn't read Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy my mother-in-law got that for me for Christmas and I haven't read the Bane Chronicles um, but I have read the Mortal Instruments and the Infernal Devices and there is like one line, one throwaway sort of thing in Lady Midnight, how it's like, hey, remember how I saw you then? And I'm like, what the f And it's like, it's in the Shadowhunter Academy. So going into this book, you need to have read a lot of other books. And I was very, very hesitant. I did enjoy Emma Carstairs and the Blackthorn family in City of Heavenly Fire. Um, so I was like, yeah, I get it. Like, I understand. And then reading this book, <gasps> holy shit. I gave this book five stars. Parts of the story, don't get me wrong, that we didn't need but like I guess we do need because it's setting up stuff for other books but whoa I read this book it's like 700 pages almost I read it in two days like I was just like no, actually no one day I read it in 24 hours sorry I'm completely wrong um cannot wait for the next book <laughs> this book totally ripped me open and I finished it way before Sivvy so sh I was like she's like saying stuff and I'm like mm-hmm mm -hmm. I did guess what was going to happen pretty much from like the first quarter of the book like I had said stuff to Sivy I was like this is just weird and shady like what's the deal with this and you know it kind of um turned up but I think that as a reader it's really hard to get things past me like I you probably noticed that in all of my wrap-ups I'm always like nah I saw this coming like I saw that coming you know because I'm I think as a person very very suspicious <laughs> mm, no I don't trust that really really good book I mean if you have read the other books, I wouldn't say if you haven't read The Mortal Instruments, go and pick it up because like I've said, it's not really one of my favorite series. But if it is something that interests you, check it out. It could be for you. Um, but honestly, you need to read so many freaking books before you understand what's happening. I'm losing my voice, oh my God. And it's back. <laughs> I was so sure that I was gonna be put into like a year long book slump reading Lady Midnight because it just blew my mind that much. So I picked up Lead by Kylie Scott, which is the third book in the Stage Dive series. This is centered around the lead singer of the band. I read the first two last year. Three star book. Like it's it's a new adult romance sort of thing, so boy meets girl, boy and girl are combative with one another, boy and girl realize they should probably hook up, you know what I mean? It's all of that sort of stuff. And then I read Deep, which is the fourth and final book in the Kylie Scott Stage Dive series. Can't say anything about this, of course, you know, it's the fourth book, so all sorts of crazy shit has ensued in it, but that was also another three star book and I just whipped through these books really quickly, so that was good and it kind of got me out of that mindset that I was going to be in the reading slump because I'm terrified that I'm just jinxing myself by making this video telling you about the books that I've read and I'm like well I'm never gonna read again am I because I've put it out there in the universe that I've read this many books so far so that's just me as a person I'm a superstitious old lady next book was beautifully written um, but a subject matter that I just can't really get on board with and that is unteachable so this is about a girl named Maze who goes to a fair one night um, she's just kind of kicking around. It's like, it's one of those books that's written, I always say this, but they're written like a Lana Del Rey music video. You know, it's just kind of like, you're floating through LA and you're on like, you know, a cloud, man. And it's 1970 and everyone's just like on Quaaludes or whatever. It's that sort of flowery language. The maze is at the fair um, and she meets this guy and he's a little bit older and she, you know, says that she's old enough to drink and um, they end up hooking up and sleeping together in his car and 
and you know she's like oh that was like really great like but she feels a connection to him which is something that she doesn't necessarily want because she has a crap mom and a whole lot of other things she just wants to move to LA and she wants to be a movie producer and then so she just wants to forget about this guy and she goes back to school she's in her senior year and the guy walks in and he's her new film studies teacher which is the class she needs to get into college so it's basically about their relationship and the things that happen during that I mean I gave this a 3.5 it was beautifully written but that subject matter and that trope of teacher-student relationship it just does not sit well with me it's an abuse of power so I couldn't give it any higher than that but I mean if it's something that you're into I can completely understand like if it was just she wasn't in school and he wasn't her teacher like even if the age difference was such I would have been way more comfortable with it but the fact that it was teacher couldn't couldn't do it next thing I read was a novella by C.S. Picat and that is The Summer Palace which is like a epilogue novella type thing for the Captive Prince trilogy so can't say anything about that five stars though loved it and I read one of my most anticipated reads of January and that was Mafiosa by Catherine Doyle I have actually ordered a physical copy of this one as well because I loved it so much and I want to collect the whole trilogy and have it on my shelf so I gave that one a five stars great conclusion the thing that I love about Catherine Doyle is she's not afraid to kill people and that's all I'm gonna say another book that I picked up this month because of Jen because she's a terrible influence is I remember you this book oh my gosh five stars five star book were really really beautiful it's this girl and she is just sort of a bit of a nerd in class one day and this hockey player kind of sits behind her and he's just like hey how are you and really acts like he knows her he's pretty confused because they've never had any contact before that but he tries to jog her memory he's like no you've got to remember like we've done this before and she's he's having all of these memories of her that aren't in her memory so it's kind of like you're wondering the whole time you're like well what's happening here what is this and it's just really beautifully written I loved this book I definitely recommend this book I don't really want to say anything else about it because um, I don't want to ruin it for you guys but let me know in the comments down below if you have read it. I remember you because it is so cute it's so cute oh my gosh and the last book that I've read in this middle part of the month is The Sugar Queen by Sarah Addison Allen I'm pretty sure that's her name I gave this one a three stars it had one of my least favorite things ever in it I can't even talk about it it kind of traumatized me oh and she is I think she's maybe 28 um, and she is still living at home with her mom she's desperately in love with the mailman she sort of has like a fairy godmother living in her closet to try to help her out of her comfort zone and to do more with herself and with her life and stand up for herself a little bit more because her whole life is really centered around taking care of her mother who had her quite late in life it's just it was a good little read it was very fast I read it in one sitting so that was that <laughs> background noise it is currently like 94 degrees here and that's 36 um celsius for anyone who doesn't do fahrenheit like i.e the rest of the world looking at you america what on earth if there's noise that that's what it was i can't even apologize it's hot you know like you we're lucky my makeup is not on my chest you know what you guys have read so far this month if you're on track with your goodreads goal if you've set a goodreads goal because that's pretty crazy i mean i've only set it at 60 books and i'm already seven books ahead of schedule but i prefer to be an overachiever than worrying about meeting my goodreads goal if i can smash it again that would be awesome i think that i read 115 books last year which is like what, how did I do anything else with my time you know like I have children to raise and a house to clean and meals to cook so I'm really proud of myself for that one but you guys are having an amazing day wherever you are in the world lots of love hugs and kisses Mwah! bye